Extract from the 494th Official Contact Report of May 11, 2010. Billy says but tell me, you being a geologist, physicist, biologist, chemist and zoologist and whatever other specialist fields you have mastered, what unicellular organisms must I imagine to be those which, in the earliest times, formed the essential basis for life on the earth and which are responsible for it? And when, more or less, did they exist? Pata says your question certainly relates to stromatolites, because fundamentally these were the essential link from which, ultimately, all life formed. The age of the stromatolites was around 3.5 billion years ago. Billy says and these stromatolites are therefore the actual origin of terrestrial life. Did they originate on Earth? Patar says their fundamental origins were comets and meteors which fell onto the early Earth and brought with them the corresponding basic forms of life and amino acids, and so forth. Billy says yes, I can imagine. But today it is unfortunately the case that new life is not brought to the Earth but instead, since a very long time ago, that which exists is being destroyed and wiped out. This is as a result of the irrationality of the human beings who destroy everything through the catastrophic results of their mad overpopulation. Generally the average human beings on the good mother earth do not know what monstrous damage they cause to nature and the planet itself with their overpopulation, because they are fooled and deceived by those responsible for the world, indeed by the governors and the scientists. So the majority of Earth humanity also knows nothing about how climatic warming has very much worse and more monstrous catastrophic results for the Earth, its nature and for all life, than the persons in charge officially announce through inadequate information. In regard to that, one just thinks of the gigantic masses of permafrost which contain monstrous amounts of methane gas, which is released through the thawing and melting of the permafrost and is released into the atmosphere. Not only is the climatic catastrophe thereby furthered more than ever, but also still many other monstrous things occur through which life on Earth is put into question. The monstrous masses of methane gas can far exceed the great amounts of CO2 and thereby, more than ever, destroy everything. Also, as a result of all that, the oceans, their currents and their formation of waves, are monstrously and dangerously influenced and evoke increased numbers of monster waves, that is to say, gigantic waves, respectively, mega waves. This occurs along with the atmosphere being influenced in terrible ways, especially, however, its lowest layer, therefore the troposphere, in which the weather processes take place thereby storms of all kinds as well as thunderstorms become more and more powerful and destructive and they more and more closely resemble weather processes which once prevailed on the earth in primeval times the weather processes and storms which are evoked by the masses of methane gas also evoke monstrous movements in the ocean waters whereby warm masses of water move right down to the floor of the ocean and churn it up. In this way the gigantic amounts of methane gas, which are stored in the ocean floor, are released and drift upward, where they are then swirled around in the troposphere and reach into the upper layer of the atmosphere. The results which come about through the release of the methane gas will then be catastrophic. Patar says there is no doubt about that, the end.